Welcome to today's Thought for the Day. I'm Paul Hardy from the Vicar of St Peter's and today I want to share with you one of my favourite Bible passages. I often find myself going back to the Psalms because as somebody said, most scripture speaks to us, the Psalms speak for us. Now one of my favourite Psalms is Psalm 8. It begins with a confident note of praise as David rejoices in the God who created the world. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For me, the psalm provides a vital insight into our place in God's universe. Now I approach faith from the perspective of a scientist, that's my background. I studied chemistry at university and became a Christian in my first year of the course. For me, the psalm brings God's perspective to my understanding of science. The popular view, of course, is that science has disproved Christianity, that they're incompatible with one another. However, this psalm reminds me that while science can provide an understanding of the how of creation, religion and specifically Christianity can, own, can offer us an insight into the why. So in the psalm, David offers us two important truths about our place as human beings in God's world. On the one hand, he reminds us of our smallness. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. He's moved in worship as he reflects on the wonder of the night sky, the work of the creator. For him, it's like the work of a great artist. The art reflects the character of the artist himself. After all, you can't miss a picture that's been painted by Monet. David sees a creation shot through with meaning and purpose, demonstrating the tremendous wisdom and power of God. Now, people may well ask you, why should I bother with God? But the real question is, why should God bother with us? Lockdown gives us that opportunity of reflecting and developing our relationship with God to get to know him better, to find out more about his world. So why not spend some time reflecting on the world around us? Go out, look at the sky, look at the hills. What do they say about God and our place in the world? On the other hand, the psalm speaks to us about our significance. David writes, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? When we think about the size of the universe, it's easy to feel very insignificant, isn't it? Why do human beings exist on such a tiny planet in such a vast universe? But David goes on to answer this as well. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. Human beings have that unique relationship with God. We are created, the Bible says, in the image of God. Unlike the animals... We can reason, we can choose, we can love, and ultimately we can worship God. In this way, we're personally responsible to God for our lives, and he wants us to live in complete dependence upon him. At uni, that was the lesson I learned. My search for God began because I recognised that my life was empty of meaning and purpose. And this, of course, was a symptom of the absence of God in my life. Again, this crisis gives all of us an opportunity to reflect on God's place in our lives and how he wants to make himself known to us and to show the plans he has for us. The psalm tells us that life is not intended to be random, but indeed to reflect the plan and purpose of God for us. So again, why not spend some time reflecting on this and other psalms as you seek to make sense of your current situation? I like the story told of the American president, Franklin D. Roosevelt. After an evening spent with the naturalist William Beebe, together they would stand outside the White House, gazing up at the night sky. And finding the consolation of Pegasus, they'd recite these words. There is the spiral galaxy of Andromeda, which is large, as large as our own Milky Way. It is one of one and a half billion galaxies and is 750 thousand light years away. It consists of a hundred billion suns, each larger than our own sun. Then they would pause 
And Roosevelt would say, now I think we feel small enough. Let's go inside.